society didn't like it. Jesus saw the tax collector and said, follow me. Now in verse 11, when you go there, look at what it says. While Jesus was sitting at the house having a, a dinner, uh, when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors? Now I want to give a definition here. The definition I want to give is centered around the Pharisees. So what's this definition? The Pharisees are a member of an ancient Jewish sect, distinguished by strict observance of traditional and written laws. Right? Listen to them now. And commonly held to have pretensions to superior sanctity. Oh. That means they look down at everybody else. That's not on their level of understanding. Amen? They were self-righteous people. Right? These were the people that were in position to rule over people that they considered not serving God rightly. Ain't that right? In other words, they were hypocrites. They were judging you by the law and not following the law themselves. Come on. A lot of these things were traditional things that they put into the law. It wasn't just the law that God gave. It were traditional and cultural things that they adapted into the nature of the law to serve their purpose. Amen? Amen. And it, which, which pretty much explains why they got angry when they saw Jesus sitting with the tax collector and these sinners. But look at what Jesus' response to them was. In verse 12, he said, on hearing this, Jesus said, is it, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I paused because I asked you a question. When did you realize you needed a change? How healthy were you? We look crazy because we look at people and say, now you want to run to the church. Really? Well, well, that's the best place to go. When I'm sick, when I'm struggling, when I'm going through something, that's the best place for me to go. Right. But look at the church people in here saying, man, you want to run to the church. Who really are you? Yes. Come on. If God said that's who needs me the most, who are you if you want to turn me away and turn me down? Isn't that right? Amen. That's what the word said. He said, in verse 12, he said, but the sick, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Look what Jesus says. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Don't kill them. Show them mercy. It's hard to forgive. Amen. It's hard to forgive. It's hard to forgive, man. I'm going to call it, but that it's hard to forgive. Amen. It's hard to forgive. Yeah. Very hard. But if he forgave you, why you can't forgive somebody? Why you can't forgive another person? Amen. Always remember, he forgave you. It ain't the thing that everybody knows. The deepness of forgiveness is the thing that only you and him know. Amen. Amen. He forgave you. Matter of fact, not only did he forgive you, he told you, don't stay in the world, come on in my house. Follow me. Not only, not only am I forgiving you, but follow me. It's hard to follow somebody that you judge. It's hard to follow somebody that you'll put in a you'll put in a barrel and say they can't exceed beyond that point. You know why? Because you have condemned them. In your thoughts, you have condemned them. So I don't want to follow them. I don't want to be like them. I don't want to go where they're going. Hmm. But Christ never walked like that. Christ never talked like that. So who are we actually talking like? Who are we really serving? Who are we really serving like? Why am I going there? Because how can we go further in the church and we don't go further in the spirit? How can we go further in the building and we don't go further in relationship? Because every time you walk through that door, I should have a relationship with you. Every time I walk through this door, I should be in relationship with the essence of what this building is all about. Amen. The church. Amen. If I don't have a real relationship with the church, then I need to come in here in the manner of a man being crippled and have to be carried in here. Because he's still to show up and show out in my life. Amen. It don't mean I don't need to come in, but don't come in with the wrong mindset. 
Come in knowing that you need help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Come in knowing that I need God to do some things in my life to make me better than where I am. Because this is the hospital. This is a place where healing occurs. Amen? Amen. And be bold enough to confess it in the midst of congregations of people. I'm lost. I'm destroyed. I'm struggling. I'm suffering. I don't know what's going on, but I need help. Sir. And then be bold enough to accept the help that God wants to give you. Amen. Amen. But I seek you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God. Present everything about you. Not part of you. Present your hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Present your demons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Present your strongholds. Yes, Lord. Present all of them. That's what the church is all about. Present our weaknesses. Present your feelings. Because your feelings can be ugly. And also can be a hindrance. Matthew's 9 is a very deep teaching. And I pray that I can do it some justice. But I'm not sure to be super spectacular. I'm not. I'm just trying to share. You know, for somebody to share with me. Let somebody I'm share with me. me. So the hypocrites in 9, 12, and 13, we need to watch ourselves and make sure we govern ourselves and that we don't that we don't practice those things. Because I like what the teacher said this morning, that somebody's watching you. Amen. I got so ready to come in here, I was just going to go down and listen. In verse 18, watch this now. In verse 18, it said, while he was saying this, a ruler came in and knelt down before him. Why did the ruler come in? The ruler had money. The ruler had uh, service. The ruler had authority. The ruler had pretty much everything that he needed, but he couldn't do the very thing that he needed Jesus to do. I'm talking about miracles, y'all. Yeah. That's really what we're talking about. The ruler, look at what the ruler said in 18. In 18, Matthew 18, the ruler came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died. Something going to occur to make you run to Jesus now, I'm telling you. Yes. Yes. I don't know if you've been there yet. No matter what position you hold, how much power you possess, how headstrong you are, something close to your heart going to affect your life and make you run to Jesus if you already have a man. Amen. Amen. This ruler knelt down before him and said, my daughter has just died. And why are you running to Jesus? She already did. Listen to the part of this now. This is a man that's in authority. The man has been recognized by the king. The man that's recognized by the people. That one thing, the man that got all the money he need, big house, mansion, cars, but he didn't have Jesus. But he knew Jesus. He knew him from conversation. Why are you so quiet, believers? Why are you so quiet when it comes to talking about Jesus? He heard somebody's conversation about what he could do. When his daughter died, he ran to what he heard. That's why we got to be careful when we get involved in our conversation. We got to be careful when we let our mouths open up to because we don't know who we influence as we run. We don't know who's listening to us that's going to take what we're saying. And if it ain't about God, what's this? If it ain't about God, one of the, one of the biggest hills that occur today is church people talk bad about church people. Amen. Somebody just coming into the church, they look at you and say, oh, they talking like that. I don't need to be in there with them. But, but here's what's ugly about it. You know, ain't one time to that person directly and said, can we talk? No. Hello? Because if you go to them directly, the first thing going to occur, if you're doing it out of godliness, God's going to take control of the atmosphere. We'll get answers, not speculation. Hello? 
Look at the ruler. The ruler spoke to Jesus and said, my daughter just died. <laughs> but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Even the ruler know the power that was in his touch. Man. Here we are believers. Here we are believers. And all the time, we don't cry out to them. Things happen all around us. Things going on that we don't put. We don't ask him to put his hand on my child. Put, my, put his hand on my wife. Put his hands on my husband. I woke up the other night when she was talking about it, and I saw her hand in there over me. I just looked up at him, and I kind of turned a little bit, a little bit as I say, keep praying. Hey man, I don't want you to take your hand with no be praying. I like that. Amen. Because I need your prayers. Yes. Don't you know the prayers of the righteous prevail much? That's who we are. That's who we say we are. We confess to be righteous. Come on, let's pray for each other. Yes. We're sincere. Because we put it in God's hand. Yeah. You know what? Right? Amen. Maybe I'm just talking to myself. Not great. Not great. We're here. But I do know. That the God that we serve will hear our voice he will. and hear our cry and respond to it. Yes, he will. He'll show up. Yes, but you've got to trust him. Amen? Amen. Good word. He said, just put your hands and she will hear. Jesus got up. Oh, what he said, brother teacher. Jesus got up and got ready to respond to what he said. How was he responding? He was going to his house. In yeah. route to his house, watch the message, man. And round to his house while moving through the crowd. <laughs> moving through the crowd of the woman that had been sick. He was going to the ruler's house, but because he was going to the ruler's house, somebody that was already sick, searching for him, found him, and saw him in the crowd and forced her way to get to him. And he touched, she touched, because of portion of him. Watch this now, stop. Because the healing didn't come right then. The healing came when he found her. Remember he said, somebody touched me. And the disciples said, hold up, now all these people around you, how do you know a whole lot of people touch you? It ain't that type of touch. It was a healing touch. He felt it. He felt it. So when he finally confronted her, he said, your faith. Yes, he didn't say my faith. But your persistence, Woo. your yearning, your fuck, your trust. That made you fight your way through all of this thickness, this struggle, the trial, the pain, the suffering. Fight your way through years of struggle. A hurting situation, bad situations, family situations, community situations, financial situations. All of them. When you bleed it, your heart is hurt. And you still touch me. Because you believe that your touch with me, not my touch to you. But your touch to me will change your life. It'll heal you. And Jesus looked at her. Because she was healed. But he had to give her clarity. It was your desire to touch me. Your faith that touched me. Because faith touching faith. Do we hear that? Faith. Move mountains. Move mountains. Faith touches faith. The paralytic man. Yeah. Not his faith. Their faith. But their faith. Their faith. Made him whole. Yeah. How, how did he make him whole? Because he was separated in the spirit because of the deeds and his actions, his life, his sinful nature. God said, their faith brought you to me. Only <laughs> do it. Don't stop praying, Mom. 
Don't stop praying, Dad. Don't stop believing, Son. Because it has purpose and foundation in life with God.
Hand ain't just talking about that thing on your body. But what do you touch with your hand? Hand is an extension of your heart. What are you speaking to that you need to touch with the hand of God? Amen. Amen. The man's sin and his forgiveness occurred because of the faith of others. The tax collector followed him and he became a pen as a man writer. His whole life changed because he followed him. And we read his book to this day because his life changed. He didn't just follow him, he became a recorder of what he saw. Amen. We don't know what God's purpose for us. Amen? Amen. The one with the issue of blood, he saw her faith. And her faith was right enough to change her life. You know what he really saying to us? Whatever the struggles are that you're dealing with, whatever's hurting you that you're dealing with, what you've been carrying for all these years, what you did with it? The power was in your hand. He's already opened up the doors. The gate is already wide open. He can't make you more plainer, but you got to really surrender to him because it was her faith. Faith in Hebrews 11 said what? The substance of things hoped for. Amen? Amen. Let me go on. In the ruler's house, the girl got up. The ruler gave his house to Jesus. When he came in, he changed things. He brought things from a dead level to a living level. That's what he waited to do with our houses. Amen? Now, here's what I went to this scripture, this passage for. In Matthews 9 and 27. 9 and 27, it says, As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him. What should have came to life just then is, how did two black men follow him? Amen? I mean, come on, come on, come on. I, I got to do this. I got to do this. Brother Nelson, come back. I know I didn't do this. You're going to be mad. All right, go back up to the back. Go back up to the back. Brother Nelson, come on. Go back up to the back. Now, now, now. Y'all got to trust me now. <laughs> Amen. Everybody look up. Uh, we don't go. We don't. We don't. That's why <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's not a bad thing. That's a good one. Okay. Swap Yeah. All right. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Now I want y'all to follow me. Come on. Follow me. Just start walking. Oh, no. I'm going to hold your eyes. Hold your eyes. Hold your eyes. Follow me. Be calm. Not what they saw. 
It was all about what they believed and not just what they heard. That's why he said in Hebrews, faith, no, faith is the essence of things hoped for. I had to find you in order to start hoping for something greater than what I was surrounded by. So once I heard your voice, now my faith begins to build for my yearning to have a relationship with you. So it says the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I don't see it, but I know we're in here. Amen. And I'm awake and tearing. That's what he told the disciples, tearing in the other room until the spirit come in. Don't go nowhere, well, just carry it. Why? Because you will know the spirit because the spirit will know you. Mm -hmm. Now just imagine how many people left the room that didn't leave with the spirit. Never tell you that, do it. How many people was up in the room and was still up there while everybody else was gone? Because he said, we got some people that's going to be talking about their preachers and they ain't really preachers. They don't really know me. So everybody that you get around that's talking about this godly thing don't necessarily have a relationship with God. That's true. That's the truth. Amen. Look at the word now. We're almost finished. In 27, it says that Jesus went on from there. Amen. As he went on from there, two blind men, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. Have mercy on us, son of David. They followed him, crying out, Have mercy on us, son of David. Now, again, eyes closed, can't see, but I'm following him. Because I believe he's here. I believe he can hear me wherever he's at. I believe that he's unlimited where I'm limited. I believe that he's capable where I'm not capable. So I will cry out in my condition, under my circumstances, because I believe he's capable of doing whatever I need him to do, no matter how my circumstances are, because it don't stop him from being able to perform in my life. Amen? Amen. Don't put a limit on God, because you live it. You can't see how you can pay your bills, or God can. Hello? But you got to trust it. Amen. We we finna get finished. I know. He said in 28, he said, when he had gone indoors, watch this now. So apparently he was outdoors. When he had gone indoors, watch what the blind man did. Okay. Follow him. You ain't get away from me, Jesus. Whatever I gotta do. Keep talking, Jesus. Keep talking, Jesus. I know you're in here. I know you're in there. I know you're right there. He looked and said, he's been walking over me now. I know you're right there. Amen. Amen. We know where Jesus is. Yeah, That's the part we're missing. You know where he is. You know what I know? Because he said, but in you, my spirit is. The blindness is not about walking out there. The blindness is what's occurring in you. He said, it's awesome, what? Those who are sinners. In our sins, we are blind. But the Spirit of God is within us. Huh? Yeah. So how can I take the scales off of somebody else when the scales on my eyes stop me from seeing? So how can you really take it off of me if you ain't took it off yourself? By straightening up with the spirit that's in you. How did they follow him? How did they follow him? They followed him in the spirit. They heard his voice within. Yeah. 
and they were on one accord. So I was two. There was on one accord. He said, well, two or more gathered in my name. Exactly. I've been to this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There's a God when in all of our individual myths. I don't cry out to them. Who you hurt the most. It's not what's on the outside that's going to help you. It's what's on the inside. When you're struggling the deepest, it's not who's going to come help you. It's who's already there Amen. to help you. When it hurts and you don't want to let nobody else know how bad you hurt. Amen. When you feel like you're in it all by yourself and don't nobody else know how you feel. Yeah. That relationship with God began to talk to you, to encourage you, to tell you, hold on, I got you. Amen. I'm here with you. When you're went through some things that nobody else know about, Amen. and you're saying, Lord, why? Why? Amen. And God said, I got you. Straight of course. I, I, I'm going to wrap this. I watch a lot of TEDx personal testimonies of people. And you'll be amazed at what some people have been doing. We got a program coming up called Resiliency. In that TEDx, all I heard was resiliency. And I kept saying, well, why do you send me to this? He said, because I want you to understand how serious this is. How people follow it and can get up. They made a mockery of a commercial to sell an item. They used it as a mockery to God how people fall and can't get up. And they laugh at because they can't get up. God never said we will fall and not be able to get up. In him, he'll get us up. He'll raise us up. Amen. And ain't about no people. If you push that alert, that way you can fail that. It's about relationship with God. All of them fall short. You just got to keep trusting God. Keep believing God. Because Jesus said, 